When I was gonna build this barn, when I had a vision of building this barn and the studio and the shop and all this, I was like, we're gonna have some cool cars, we're gonna do this with that. But this is crazy because it just like topped it all off and I can't do any better. How the hell am I gonna do any better than this? I don't know. So how this all started was Chad Cunningham bought a car from a dealer that John Pierce sold to the dealer. So John Pierce bought it off of the widow, sold it to his dealer friend. His dealer sold it to Chad Cunningham, who works with me, give me the VIN, and we sold it at the auction. I knew Pierce from when he worked with Holland's Head up on the East Coast, John Pierce. John Pierce, and uh, I'm in the uh, wholesale car business and been in the business for uh, years since I was uh, 16. I started flipping cars and I'm 48 now, so. He said, hey, that lady that we bought the Porsche from uh, called me, she's got a Corvette for us. And then after we bought that, I'm like, what else does she have? Because she sold us this 96 Porsche a year and a half ago. Now she pulls out of the bag a hundred mile 97 Corvette, what else does she have? He's like, she's got more. We talked to her on the phone. She's like, I've got more. She wouldn't come off of it. She wouldn't tell us what she had. She's like, you'll find out soon enough. Come to find out, I think she was settling the estate. And uh, so we get the call about 90 days ago. Well, actually, when we bought the Corvette. Um, they got my number to call and get rid of uh, a couple cars. And I ended up buying those cars and um, then it turned into they wanted to go ahead and get rid of the collection of cars they've had for years. So we get the list about three weeks ago and I'm like, Pierce, this is crazy. Are you serious? He's like, I haven't seen them, but yeah. It was in a tiny little barn in Alabama that looked ridiculous. Like you would never expect there's a million dollars worth of cars sitting in there. Well, there was. And um, we negotiated the deal and wired her the next day um, and we're moving them right now. And um, we're here today cleaning the warehouse out about 22 cars that were purchased new uh, in the 70s, 80s and 90s and have literally been sitting here ever since. And since they're non-runners, you can't just start them. They haven't been started in 30, 40 years. So, uh, it's dangerous to start them. So we have to roll them all out and roll them all in and then we'll go through them and get them gathered up. And we're gonna go through these cars over several months and uh, just uh, get them back to life, but they don't need too much because they're literally, we're parked and, uh, and never driven, so. And a lot of them that are dry, I'm gonna leave them dry, meaning no radiator fluid, no oil, no fuel. I'm just gonna leave them dry because these cars that are new from 1971, 1978, there's just no reason to make them wet because the odds are they're gonna live the rest of their life in a museum or a collection. I mean, right now it's gonna be our collection because I'm not selling nothing. I'm, I'm, this is the biggest day I've had in a long time. I'm pretty excited. Pierce is really excited too. He lives in Alabama. I think he's fixed to move to Texas just so he can be closer to these cars. But, you know, we're 50-50 on these cars. so. Um, he and I, that's the way it works with my buyers. We uh, plan to get them gone through and then uh, uh, do some advertising and probably uh, auction them off at uh, some point. He's gonna wanna sell them and I don't wanna sell them. So I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna screw him out of anything, but I don't wanna sell them. Well, these cars started accumulating through Earl Trammell's uh, love for cars. Started collecting cars at an early age and um, he'd buy them and loved them so much. Started out first with 57 Chevys and would rebuild them from the ground up. Then he found this love for Corvettes and he would just buy Corvettes and just put them up brand new. First he'd put them in basements 
We'd buy houses and he'd put them in basements. When we started overloading the houses, we started building warehouses and uh, we started packing the warehouses. So these two warehouses were full. The basements were full. We had nowhere else to put them. There's about 25 car classics in here today. Uh, many of these are very, very collectibles. The 1500 KC 1500 454 SS, 19 miles on it. You won't find another one. These cars need to be out where people can see them. So I finally talked my sister into selling the entire inventory and uh, we've accomplished that today. But Earl is all due to his love for cars and uh, he passed away this past year. And uh, so it's all about Earl and uh, his love for those cars that he fixed and repaired on a daily basis for over 60, 70 years. So that's, that's the story. Now the ZR1 is pretty special in the wrapper. The 454 SS is pretty special in the wrapper. The 98 Pace car is pretty special in the wrapper. Stupid um, purple with yellow seats. You know, obnoxious in muscle cars is a good thing, and that's very obnoxious. Uh, I'm gonna guess the, the white Stingray with red leather with a window sticker on it and wrapping on the seats, that one's grabbing me harder than any of them, and I don't even like Stingrays. I never like Stingrays. It's kind of like, eh, what is that, a C3? They're like, whatever. But, I mean, I'm looking at the pictures of that white one with the red and the window sticker. I'm like, I think I'm going to keep it. I know I'm going to keep it. I don't know why. I guess that this group made me like some Stingrays. I always kind of hated them. I've heard of situations like this not very often. There was a Chevy dealer somewhere in Kansas where they found a lot of his old inventory when he shut his Chevy dealership down but they were left outside and completely dilapidated. They auctioned them off about 10 years ago. They brought a ton of money. And that's the closest thing I've heard of on a collection like this, but these were properly stored. They were stored dry. They're still in plastic. They're still, I mean, they're still in the hospital. It's like a bunch of new babies that they forgot in the birthing room. It's, it's crazy. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. This is the goofiest thing I've seen in my career. I've been doing this 31 years. I've never seen anything like this. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, uh, what are you going to do with them? I don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know? I said, I know one thing, they're not going down in value. We're good there. I may be like the crazy old guy that bought them. I may be, I may die and the next time that y'all hear about them is when I die and people are coming to scoop them out of my barn. I don't know, but I am very happy to have them and this is by far the biggest find of my career. You'll notice some of the wheels on the cars are mismatched, specifically the Grand National the Lightning and the WS6 Trans Am. I think there's one more. But the son and the stepmom were arguing over the car. So he stole three sets of wheels from her and we have already went back to him and overpaid and bought the darn wheels from him so we can bring them back to Texas and put them on the cars and have it finished. It's never easy, but it's worthwhile. Hope you guys enjoyed this there will be more i'm getting this tv channel going youtube john clay wolf show we've been on radio for years and we're coming to video and this is our first presentation please 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 subscribe 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 so that the youtube algorithms will pick up on it and it will start growing because it takes a lot of energy to get this done as you can see this video was hard to produce and we need to get it in the wind and this is the best video for a car show that I can think of to get this thing set right and get it rolling. So subscribe, like us, stay tuned for more great clips from GMTV Garage brought to you by myself, John Clay Wolf, and Saturday mornings all over the country. The John Clay Wolf Show, been doing it 18 years. JCWshow.com shows everywhere you can find us. Podcast, classic rockers, there's 70 classic rockers that air our show Saturday mornings. Pretty funny stuff if you've got a bad sense of humor. Stay tuned.